Ready Player Will. Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. I am back from vacation, finally catching up on some things. The Shall's review today. Obviously, we have Grifford that I still need to go over. The Final Fantasy VIII collab units that we just got announced last night. But for today, we're going to focus on our brand new fire support that just came in about a week and a half ago. And today, pretty standard stuff. The character overview, base and total stat analysis with some other stat observations as well, leading up to the report card. Some general thoughts to give some context to how I think she'll operate. We'll then go through the passive counters, the job abilities, the auto priority. Then talk the TMR review, the job-based vision card eligibility for her rainbow potential, and then Esper's and weapon optimization. So, kicking things off here, brand new fire unit added to the game. They've given her the unique main job of Supplicant with the Cleric and Kotodama wielder subjobs. She also wields staffs, and as part of the staff devout class from a job-based vision card perspective, she also equips hats, cloths, and accessories with a move of three, jump of one as a 70 cost unit. I do recommend her faith being at 97 to maximize not only your of potential, her full life rate, also her potential magic damage for what it's worth. And from a main kit perspective, her maximum range is five squares away. She's got one AoE ability and no single target abilities, and this is only from the main job. So she does have one giant diamond that does reach up to five squares away, but that's it from an offensive capability perspective. Now from a resistances perspective, these are fair. You know, 10% to slash is the highest. 5% to both strike and magic are fine. That magic one's a little bit lower than average, uh, considering she's a 97 faith unit, but she does have minus 5% to missile and minus 15% percent to pierce that is a very very big one from an ailment perspective and you should be cognizant of these because she is a 97 faith unit so more likely to be afflicted by them she's got a 50 percent to slow 50 percent to silence and 10 percent to confusion these honestly aren't some of the worst ones obviously silence is a great one considering you can't ever silence her potentially to stop her from casting spells the slow one is nice there's been a little uptick in that recently and the confusion is fine overall thumbs up on these from the mastery ability they gave her a decreased chance of being target of three and an extra and 15% crit evasion at all times and her dream ability is 200 cast reduction down on all skill types so both the curative spells and the offensive spells 15 defense and they upgraded one of her abilities as well now from a base stat perspective when we look at the overview here, no real big surprise again 70 cost unit they tend to be a little bit lower on the overall stat side of things being a support unit as well she obviously would normally skew a little more on the fragile side compared to other damage dealers and frontline units so base hp yeah definitely below average but not necessarily a cause for concern some of you might remember this from the lena character review when it comes to supports the statistics are very very small portion of it's really about their kit and how well they enable their teammates and do the job they're supposed to do from a, a magic perspective though this is actually a legitimately a bad weakness in my opinion they've given her a base magic of 340 which is very much against the norm where most supports tend to skew exceptionally high and so they've already started her here at a step back compared to others that some of the 70 costs here that you're observing in terms of some of the power creep here from a magic stat perspective from an agility perspective 57 nothing wrong with that we're going to see how that potentially changes with the board and the passives from a dexterity perspective definitely below average here too she's not a high crit rate unit in the least so the dexterity stat kind of reflects that the luck though a little bit above average which is certainly nice because there's a correlation there obviously with higher base luck and what you get for potential crit evade perspective and the crit evasion is one of her major strengths to reducing damage overall now as we kind of transition those charts into these five to summarize them how she compares to other ur units not a lot of surprises here really the only strength if you will is that luck stat the rest of the base stats are relatively underwhelming and when you add in the board stats uh mastery ability the 140 and whatnot there's not a ton of changes to be honest the dexterity stat absolutely plummets even the luck stat t uh, falls back just a little bit here 47 luck isn't that bad on the board but obviously just doesn't maintain pace with other ur units and even the magic stat here they don't do a ton to really make up for that base magic she's still relatively below average in that regard so you know total stats not great again not terribly surprising given the 70 cost now from an agility perspective she does come in here at the 78 base agility she does have a passive that can amplify it to 84 very debatable whether you would have that on though I, that's a big conversation point later but overall agility not in the worst spot basically average when you consider uh, removing that passive from a crit hit perspective not even remotely close she's one of the worst in the game here when you consider crit rate from the crit avoidance rate though she does naturally start very high due to that 
15% on her mastery ability. And her main passive that they've given her for that job is another 15% crit rate potentially. So if you were to have that passive equipped from an innate character perspective, she would be the top in the game. Only Skahal being second at 77% compared to her 78% and Dark Fina just a step behind at 74%. But overall, this is a major part of her survivability as we'll continue to see throughout her kit. Now, accuracy, literally one of the worst accurate characters in the game. As you saw, the dexterity stats are very low. There's no other accuracy buffs or anything of the sort to bump this up. So she does have a 100% hit chance on the Kotodama sub, but overall accuracy, non-existent whatsoever. Now, evasion, kind of the same idea here really way off the gradient from what could ever be potentially considered uh, an evade capable unit so not nothing to really observe there either and as we get to the report card again this is a tough one to contextualize because we're comparing her to not only just the other supports but also the broad damage dealers in the game so i'll try to bring some clarity here best i can now effective hp uh, and this is omitting the tanks. This is comparing her to supports and damage dealers. It's actually not that bad. She's relatively average from an effective HP perspective. 15 defense, 2 spirit innately. She does get 8 AoE res on the weapon, 15 from her passive. So you could have up to 23 AoE res at all times. That passive is even debatable though. We'll talk about that soon. From the survivability perspective though, going with a C plus here, it's fine. I don't love it though. The main buff gives 20 AoE res. 20 crit evade and protect those are all exceptionally good things she does give courage to herself on her limit break and after that limit break she'll go up to negative nine hate she starts at minus three another minus six on the limit break i might be undercutting it just a little bit on the survivability with the c plus might be a little bit higher here but i feel like aoe res is slowly kind of getting phased out as we transition to these newer characters that are coming out but it's not a bad thing c plus is st still above average i think it's totally fine now the damage perspective absolute f here very poor base magic no spirit or magic res penetration at all and only one offensive ability in the main kit so damage is just practically non-existent here i'm giving it an f the agility i'm also going with a see here again as we observed she's got 78 innate agility versus the 77 average if you equip the passive that does technically creep above the average 84 versus 81 but i actually don't think you'd have that passive on a majority of the time very debatable so i'm kind of sticking with that c here considering what you might see most often the accuracy is an f no surprise there non-existent accuracy the 100 percent hit on the kotodama is kind of nice but again i don't think a main part of her ai the evasion also going with a d plus here barely even on the evade grade not an evade unit in the least for the movement i'm going to c minus here this is really a d in my opinion though she does have move and jump plus one on a buff on the kotodama job but very niche considering what her opening buff rotation is going to be that's really going to be for like manual pvp or pve potential so the movement might as well be a d here as far as i'm concerned for that move three jump of one the auto ease of use, I'm going with a B here. Uh, she's very buff heavy. You might need some tinkering here just to make sure you're not repeating any buffs and you know positioning her the way you want, but relatively forgiving in my opinion that obviously she's got some very nice large areas to cover those buffs as we'll see. So I don't think it's terribly hard to get her to work as intended. The game disruption though, I'm going with a D here. The low cost does make a hard sell for pulling. So in terms of what you expect many people to be using, uh, probably not gonna see her that much. She will pair well with Souls release in the future where obviously not only do they overlap there from an element perspective but they're both magic units she does have some uniqueness in her support kit which i think is a, a good attempt at it i do think there's some value there but i don't think it's enough to really you know disrupt the game and i don't think it does much against the overall game direction at the moment now from a passive perspective going with a c here she does have good passives but there's a huge dilemma in choosing as we'll get to and I think they're good, maybe not exceptional, but they're fine. I'm going to go average here. The counter abilities, I'm going to go with a C here. I think they're very average counters. The overall job and kit, going with a B minus. Interesting utility, debatable impact in my opinion though. I don't. I think she's a fine support, but the final grade, as we'll see here, I'm going with a C plus here. I honestly think that your reincarnated MR and SR supports are equally close to getting the job relatively done uh probably better for a cost limited format considering that that 70 cost of shells is where you primarily want to use her i do think there's lots of counterplay for her buffs as well for what we see in characters bringing dispel into the game so overall the impact here you know she's going to do well for characters that are hard carries if you put her in a team with soul she's probably going to do exceptional 
But it's not because of her. It's really because of Soul. Then again, at the end of the day, that's all a support really needs to do. So maybe I'm being a little harsh here with the C+. Now for my general thoughts overall, and maybe you'll see some context as to why I think this, there's some support staples missing in her kit, in my opinion. Number one, there's no healing power added to her whatsoever. There's no AoE heals whatsoever. And the maximum reduction you get to her potential single target heals is two ticks, which is just a smidge slower than what we're seeing from some of the others. So those are some big ones that immediately jumped out to me when I think of a typical support here, which is why I think you gotta, you know, change the way you approach her a little bit. There are some noticeable 70 cost efficiencies though. And number one is the bad base magic stat. Uh, her weapon gives her extra magic a little bit, extra HP, but those base stats are not her strong point. So I think it's paltry what the weapon actually does to enhance them. There's a huge conundrum with what passive to pick in my opinion. The, there's a very poor counter ability upgrade that they gave her on the EX upgrade. Very, very, very poor. That we'll see in just a couple slides. The main damage ability of hers is only like a range and a height of one, not high, range height of two. So I wish it was a little more flexible. A lot of other magic units do get that flexibility. There's no spirit or magic res pen at all all in her kit so there's not even a real damage upside per se and i don't think there's any movement versatility i don't think that buff on the kotodama job is ever viable because you're going to be spending the whole beginning of the fight using her main job buffs which you should so you know you look at some characters like resnick the lightning support let's say and her thief floor passive at least gives her move plus one that you know some supports do have that movement versatility and she just doesn't now, the buffs are dispellable as well, so there is some limited upside for the true value of some of them. We'll talk about that soon. The biggest upside, theoretically, is versus light and dark due to that main buff giving 30% resistance to each. 20 crit evade as well, where Sephiroth is a crit hit monster, so that helps against him. And obviously, dark is very AoE res heavy. You can make the same case against light, although Bart's does have some single target stuff. The sub jobs, in my opinion, are very lackluster because there's a ton of overlap with what they do compared to the main job we'll observe that in a couple sides when we go through those jobs the minus nine hate after the limit break is very good the true impact is a little more debatable though now that we have a lot of these pick two or pick three abilities a lot of these damage dealers don't necessarily have to focus on the tank they can still get in range and hit everyone and do maximum damage and depends on your positioning as well too with her where if you are grouping her with her teammates where you know you have a lot of aoe res so you naturally want her to be involved in some of those aoe's that hate is going to quickly evaporate she's still going to take some damage so i think it's debatable how good that truly ends up being the minus 15 percent all attack and peril on her only offensive ability is okay it's a relatively small in peril considering the state of current penetrations and unless you have a team that's you know three different attack types you know pierce and slash and magic th th the all uh, you know i don't know i don't know i'm reserving judgment on how good that is i think it's fine uh, the TP, in my opinion, fortunately, not a major concern considering how buff heavy she is. I, you know, if you calculate what her total TP cost is and kind of maxing out what she can use for abilities, uh, she doesn't really come close to running out like some of the other supports do. So I think that is kind of nice, at least. The offensive support, in my opinion, is mostly enabling teammates and not healing them, which is how I've seen most JP players use her. And although that might seem easy at first glance, you probably get some good results. I think there's other ways to utilize her, though. We'll talk about that more in the ability section. I obviously think she's a good rainbow unit due to being a devout class where the vision cards there support uh, rainbow teams very well. We'll talk about that in a couple sides, too. But for now, let's get into the passive abilities. And I was mentioning the conundrum here, and I really do think this. Wreath of Safety is AoE res of 15 and Crit of 15. That's a very good passive. Cleric Intuition, though, 15 Spirit and 12% Agility. Getting her up to that 84 Agility is a very strong thing for making sure she can constantly keep up with the turn order of these faster damage dealers. But Supplicant Intuition is a very, very good one too, where it's that 200 cast time down to both curative abilities and offensive abilities, but it's also the buff and debuff duration. So when you talk about Protect on teammates, or crit evade on teammates or aoe res on teammates extending the duration of all those buffs by one turn is a very good thing i think there's a legit conundrum here in terms of deciding which two of the three you pick i think wreath of safety and supplicant intuition is probably the two i'm going with but i think there's a case to be made that cleric intuition fits into there too but i think supplicant intuition is the must at all times in my opinion now for the counter abilities, uh, this is a huge swing and miss here. They upgrade a Talisman of Protection as her EX upgrade on, on one of her nodes. This is awful. They increased the proc rate chance from 20% to 30%. Considering how much reaction block rate there is in the game, this is very, very 
mundane. It's basically nothing. It's only 30% damage reduction for herself, which is very average. There's a bunch of characters that have something like this, like the Steel the Fermal Form. So yeah, this gets 10% more chance to proc than Steel the Fermal Form, which lots of characters have. It's just not that good. I would honestly stick with Auto Cure here and just hope that she can regen some health uh, before characters end up bringing her down to Courage. So yeah, counter abilities, I gave him a C. I think it's totally average. Now the main job buffs, there's a lot to unpack here and a lot of good ones, a lot of fair ones. The supplication ability here is only 120 modifier for a curative ability. It's single target, so it's fine, I guess. The Consecration of Ice, I think, is a very meh buff uh defense and spirit of 15 we've seen is a little bit power crept ice res is a little bit niche considering she's already fire unit and in terms of the priority order of you know getting off these other buffs first when you consider she's got a, a limit break which is her first turn priority we'll see soon this buff is really whatever so already over two in my opinion on how good some of these are the paired blessings is the first of the good ones though this is a select two ability where it gives regen to those characters and when they have that regen applied they get 20 percent physical and and or magic damage applied as well so that's a, a very nice you know amplification of offensive uh, abilities for your teammates so th this one's a good one right of safe passage though is that main buff and as far as i can tell the auto priorities that she uses limit break first and then right of safe passage and then paired blessing but i do need to brush up on that so i'm sorry if that ends up being incorrect but right of safe patches to here the cool thing about this is that it's already at a four turn buff duration if you have that passive equip we were just talking about that is a five turn buff duration that's a, a very very long time it's 20 aoe res 20 crit of aid 30 percent light and dark res it's also protect and it restores ap of 10 upon critical hit when your teammates land a critical hit so this is a great buff to start off there's a lot of casts of both of these four casts is a ton that's also a very strong thing here to make sure that she doesn't just use it once or twice and it wears off or gets dispelled and it's gone the amount of cast here is a strong thing and vivifying supplication is essentially just a full life ability for her as well so overall this main job here does have a lot of things to help support the teammates very lackluster on the overall curing potential those we talked about where this 120 mod is kind of whatever and then when we look at the main job offensive ability here she's only got those single one that's this nice big diamond though it's relatively cheap at 38 ap considering she's a high ap unit anyway it's a decent mod 141 percent decrease all weapon type resistance though so slash pierce missile uh, magic all those minus 15 percent for three turns and technically up to four turns if you have that passive equipped on her which why i like this i actually do like this ability though i don't love it but when you talk about where i think she's supposed to be intended to do it's supposed to be amplifying your teammates damage with that buff give them a little self-sustain to start the fight do some quick and perils midway through the fight and then hope that the fight ends quickly i think that's the intention here they didn't really like i mentioned lean into any extra healing power there's no multi heal potential her strongest heal is on her sub job but for now let's talk quickly about cast times where i always bring this up uh, the 140 upgrade gives her 200 the supplicant passive was another 200 so total reduction for all abilities is 400 so the cast time breakpoint is when these surpass 600 and the way i have these split up here in the chart these top three are the curative jobs so supplication heal is that 120 mod we just saw vivifying is that full life the curative prayer here is on the cleric sub job which we have not seen yet and then divine flame is on that main ability that we just saw and celestial dyad is on the sub job that we're about to see too sorry i know it's kind of a tongue twister but the bottom line here is she only has 400 cast time down for some of these curative abilities so the break point at best is two ticks for these full life is three ticks and offensively very very you know slow at that three tick mark as well optimally two ticks is probably the sweet spot one tick is always best though and when you do consider though that there are ways to still amplify the offensive spell potential if you add in the trust stone passive of the extra cast time down these two offensive abilities do move up a tick here so they go from three ticks to two ticks that's a good thing they don't affect any of the curative abilities though it's a different type and theoretically if you did want to go the esper route here too those offensive abilities would become one tick as well i don't hate that i think these are two decent ones to lean into but we'll talk about that more in a second the limit break as i keep alluding to is a courage ability for not only a teammate but also for herself and a reduction of eight of six so this is her opening rotation only one cast so it is good for things like arena for quick pick for stuff like that not good for those multi-battles though really for guild 
wars. But this is a good ability. I'll be honest. It's I think it's fine. We've seen how powerful this can be with characters like Sadali and even Addison giving courage to a teammate. It's certainly nice. Now, let's recap some quick teammate benefits here because I want to hone in on the support nature of her. Right of safe passage, you get 10 AP upon crit hit. That's the big offensive amplification. There's some survivability things here that she does throw in there. The protect, the AoE res, the crit evade. The paired blessing, that other one though, is that 20% damage increase as well so i think that ups uptime of enabling your teammates to keep attacking and to have that damage amplification is a way to end the fight a little bit quicker because as we keep seeing she doesn't really have enough sustain to keep pumping into teammates particularly when you have characters like bridal alaya who are hitting three people at a time it's absolutely impossible to heal all three people only one at a time it's not going to happen now there are some extra attack opportunities for teammates giving a teammate full life and giving them courage does theoretically give them potentially another turn to attack or more than that to attack so there's a way to keep the offensive stuff going and divine flaying is at minus 15 percent in peril that's another way to amplify the teammates damage everything i've seen in jp replay so far has her using that cleric sub and just spamming that single target heal that we're going to see in just a second here uh, and screw it i'll just skip ahead here for a moment curative prayer is a 210 that's much stronger than her main job heal it also removes all debuffs so i've seen that people in jp use this and spam it i don't know if that's the best though but we'll end up finding out just taking a step back here to the main sub job supplicant here divine invocation this is like not the worst buff quite honestly i just don't think it really works considering how many buffs she already has i i don't think this is strong enough to you know supersede the priority of any of the others but theoretically this is not a bad one either and celestial diet is a select two ability it's typeless damage though so unfortunately does not get any fire attack up modifiers only magic attack up but 185% modifier is not bad either. I don't I don't hate this sub job, quite honestly, but most people use Cleric for the Curative Prayer, and I, I don't blame them. There's obviously some immediate impact in return and being able to heal up a teammate. I just don't think that's necessarily how she's intended to be used. And I mentioned before, there's a lot of overlap here in the jobs where, you know, Banish, it's kind of whatever, single target attack. That Light and Dark res, she already has it on the main job, so very redundant. Prolonged Staff is a nothing burger. That's never going to be used. And Erase, debu uh, erase is, is fine, I guess, but Curative Prayer already has a removal of debuffs upon heal. So this this cleric sub job is really only good for one ability, and I don't know if this ability is my favorite, to be honest. But the Kotodama wielder, the thing that I hate about this is the fact that they gave her no spirit or magic res pen potential. So even though you look at this and you're like, cool, 200% hit chances, that's nice. If you can't do damage, like, ample enough damage to keep up with where the state of the game currently is this job is genuinely kind of whatever for me in my opinion the real upside here is leaning into the stun potential on spirit breaking pain or even on the diffusive perplexity which is usually turned off in auto but you know if you're going against evade units or who knows what i guess i could see a chance of that being on but uh, yeah the sub jobs i don't really love because i think it it doesn't add a ton that the main job doesn't already have but either way we'll, we'll keep going here the tmr review uh this is a cloth type uh, the HP is very bad. Uh, 6 defense, 6 spirit, 12 crit evade. Kind of fits into that theme we were seeing. I do like the ability on this a lot, though. This is a ranged cross shape ability here. 2 casts. It's elemental chain res of 40 for 3 turns for allies. Maybe up to 4 turns with that passive, as we saw. And all of, obviously nullifies some of these uh, status effects as well, which is a certainly nice value add. But I like that they added this on a TMR where not every character has access to elemental chain res. And so if you pair this with certain kinds of tanks or certain kinds of characters that can benefit from, let's say, the Reagan vision card, I actually like this TMR a lot for what they added. So this is actually a big thumbs up for me. I don't know if it's enough for Shals to use it, but I do think you could get some good use out of this somewhere in the game. Particularly as we're seeing some of these characters, uh, you know, lap your team in turns and build up chains a lot quicker. Now for the job-based vision cards, I'm going to default once again to JB79's amazing online Google slide view of this. And I'm sorry, I know some of this gets cut off by my, my screen here, but when we're looking at staff devout and what they have access to, we do have some good ones here in terms of area resistance, where this, the unit res and the agility, you have technically two agility cards. One of them is coming in the future. The staff devout is definitely a good rainbow option support and being a support, as we've seen with her buffs, at the end of the day, she doesn't really matter what she has for you know magic attack modifiers or fire attack modifiers or anything like that. As long as she can support the team she's in, job is complete. So I like that from that perspective. Perspective. Overall, I think there's a lot of things to take away from here being staffed about that I think are good for her. Now for the S percentages, I don't have a ton to say here. The nodes to focus really would be magic percent in my opinion, where again, you're trying to amplify 
her potential magic stat for some of that curative potential maybe or the very limited damage output she might have it's genuinely really just matchup specific and i bring up shiva here obviously because shells does have that minus 15 percent pierce res shiva can take away some of that if you're hedging for weaknesses but other than that just focus on elemental res weapon type res that's really it because there's not a lot of offensive upside here and even her base magic being as low as it is the the magic percent nodes are they're fine they're just not they're whatever i, I don't have a strong esper recommendation maybe throw typhon on here as well for that magic nodes uh, i don't know really matchup specific and finally the weapon optimization you know i don't i don't think there's a better weapon than this for her give her that magic build i think the 158 magic is is worth it this aim of 15 is basically nothing considering how bad she is the ability effects are fine uh hp of 15 percent is 5% more than the Trust Stone passive. Her base HP is not great though, so I don't really love that. The magic of 25% is 5% more than the Trust Stone passive, so I don't really love that either. You know, those are both nice because it maybe frees up some Trust Stone passive slots where you can put in some other things for her. That's an actual good benefit, but statistically, I don't think it's anything special. It's really more for the flexibility. The 8 AoE res is nice, but considering she has really like none innately unless you put on that passive eight is kind of a drop in the bucket for where the power cube of the game went this is a good ability though the increase ct of 200 when your hp falls below 200 or 20 percent when you consider she has courage so if you bring her to courage she'll get that ct up that's actually a really nice thing might be the best thing about the staff quite honestly i don't think i'd build anything other than this though i don't think any of the other staffs really offer anything that this doesn't for her i think it's all pretty competitive this is probably still the best the only honorable mention though is galzak's tmr if only because again that magic stat if we're trying to just max it going the tmr route here and stacking all of the magic stat here with the trust stones you put on it technically probably can get it to a higher magic stat than what the demon tree staff might do but the healing power 15 also is kind of nice because again it's only five percent more than what that normal trust stone passive would have but she's got none in her kit i don't have a strong case for it it's really just an honorable mention but that's the shells character review in a nutshell again there's a lot of things that i'm, I'm kind of confused on maybe not though she's a 70 cost unit so that's probably why a lot of this is the way she, it is i think she's a fine support maybe not what fire needed in particular but as far as like rainbow teams go being a staff devout i think it's a good value add i think there's a lot of good unique things they've done for her and i do think she's probably going to get some use as the game goes on i just don't think as i mentioned the game disruption is really all that impactful at this time but that's it for now thanks for watching everybody i'll talk to you all soon